But his law firm, um, the law firm that he hired and that New Jersey taxpayers paid for, they have also divined the real explanation from what happened on the George Washington Bridge. Turns out the governor's law firm in this million dollar report paid for by New Jersey taxpayers has decided to blame what happened on that bridge all on this lady. Uh, and the report speculates openly and repeatedly throughout the report. And even they said out loud today in the press conference announcing the report that maybe the whole thing happened because of her love life, because of problems in her love life. You know how women are. Crazy. Boy crazy. That's why it happened. You know how it is. But guess what? What we found was that whatever personal relationship brief Stepien and Kelly had, had ended by the first week of August 2013, and they largely stopped speaking. So I don't expect... How do you know that, Randy? We know it from our witness interviews, and it was confirmed by multiple interviews. Let, me just, that, right? let me just finish. That. Let me just finish. Let me just finish. We shouldn't be yelling out, but let me just finish. So the taxpayer-funded million-dollar report by these lawyers hired by Governor Christie has decided that the Hoboken issues are settled because they have found a picture of the Hoboken mayor yawning and also smiling, and they've decided that, as body language analysis, is totally damning to her case. And they've decided to explain away the bridge matter with this hard evidence, hard evidence that they have turned up about Bridget Kelly's personal life. They brought up this matter of her personal life at the press conference announcing the report, and they reference it repeatedly throughout this million-dollar document. Look, quote, at some point after Bill Stepien's departure to run the Chris Christie re-election campaign, Bridget Kelly and Bill Stepien became personally involved, although by early August 2013, their personal relationship had cooled, apparently, at Mr. Stepien's choice. Then, a little later on in the report, quote, evidence in Kelly's personal life may have had some bearing on her subjective motivations. Her first known communication to David Wildstein about the lane closures occurred around the time that her relationship with Bill Stepien had cooled, apparently at Bill Stepien's behest. And Stepien and Kelly had largely stopped speaking. Indeed, that fact may have affected how Kelly and Stepien conducted themselves. Why is it relevant if these people were or were not having a relationship and how it was going? The relevance of this is never explained. It's just supposed to be self-evident, I guess, and they keep bringing it up over and over and over again. Look, here it is again on page 17. Given that Stepien's personal relationship apparently cooled by... Stepien and Kelly's personal relationship apparently cooled by early August 2013... I mean, essentially, they're going throughout this report over and over again. Did we mention that he dumped her? What possible relevance does that have to the issue of whether or not the Chris Christie administration abused its power by using the busiest bridge in the world as a weapon to attack a small town as some sort of act of political retaliation? Why on earth would Bridget Kelly's personal life and how her love life was going and whether or not Bill Stepien dumped her be relevant to that political question? I mean, maybe if she had explained that that was her state of mind and she'd had an emotional breakdown and therefore had done something at work that was totally out of keeping with anything else she'd ever done in her job and anything else the Christie administration had ever done or expected because she explained that she was so upset about a break. I mean, did she explain that? Did she say that in a deposition or something? Is that why this is in the report three times and was also brought up gratuitously at the press conference? No. In fact, Bridget Kelly never spoke to the lawyers who did this investigation. The people doing this investigation didn't speak to her, and they also didn't speak to the other person who they say she was having a relationship with. So what they've printed throughout the report is gossip about what they heard about their relationship and how it was going. They just gratuitously, gratuitously bring that up as they blame the whole thing on her. In real life, this is called slut-shaming. I'm not sure what they call it in New Jersey politics, but it's amazing to see it in this report that New Jersey taxpayers have paid for. A million dollars in public money spent to produce this report, which blames the bridge scandal without explanation on the fact that this lady in the office was having a tough time in her love life. Amazing. Uh, but keep in mind that uh, these are the lawyers. Uh, this is also the law firm that Governor Christie's office has hired essentially to put together the governor's defense in this issue. The governor's defense as federal prosecutors continue to pursue potential federal criminal charges related to this scandal. 
Now, there's no indication right now that Governor Christie, Governor Christie is going to be indicted in this matter. But today's report looks very much like a ready criminal defense if that would become necessary. A would-be defense prepared at taxpayer expense and previewed for all of us at a length of 360 pages today. And as they have rolled out the governor's legal defense today, uh, they also did it in conjunction with a public relations rollout. The governor granting his first one-on-one -on -one interview tonight since the scandal broke. Uh, he did the interview at his home. This was the PR photo released by Governor Christie in advance of tonight's interview airing on ABC World News uh, to show you, obviously, what a contentious experience it was for everyone involved sitting down for this interview. The Christie administration also sent out multiple press releases today touting the complete exoneration of the governor by his administration's own lawyers, as if there's anything here other than an argument that the governor shouldn't be indicted. An argument made, as it says right on the cover of the report, an argument made on behalf of the office of the governor. And while the governor's office is touting this report as a comprehensive and exhaustive look at the scandal, uh, what was probably the biggest surprise today when they finally released it was that they actually published no new documentation about the scandal at all. I mean, we knew that he hadn't, the, that the lawyers hadn't spoken with Bridget Kelly, they hadn't spoken with uh, David Wildstein, they hadn't spoken with Bill Stepien, they hadn't spoken with a lot of the people who were right at the center of the scandal. But they do brag about having reviewed a quarter of a million documents, doing more than 70 interviews, including with the governor himself. But they released, and this was a surprise, they released no transcripts from those interviews. In fact, no substantial direct quotes from those interviews. They released none of the documentation they said they looked at. They released none of these text messages, none of the emails they said they saw, no documents of any kind. They just published this one long narrative today with unrelenting, glowing, gauzy characterizations of Governor Christie's strength and leadership and character throughout this difficult time. The governor demanded straight answers from his senior staff. The governor welling up with tears, expressing shock at the revelations. They actually say in the executive summary of the report, Governor Christie's account of these events rings true. He has conducted himself at every turn as someone who has nothing to hide. You know, if they had been slightly less over the top, it would have been easier to stomach this. But apparently they could not contain themselves and they had to sprinkle everything with glitter and smiley faces.